Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at some practical problems with rational numbers together to help us review for the Unit 2 test. Number 1, the temperature in Wintergreen Resort in Virginia fell from 11.5 degrees Celsius to negative 6.7 degrees Celsius. What is the difference between the two temperatures? Now that we've read the entire problem once, we can go ahead back through a second time and highlight important information. So if the temperature in wintergreen fell from 11.5 degrees Celsius, that means we started at 11.5, and then the temperature dropped all the way to negative 6.7 degrees. So I can tell that the temperature is decreasing because we started at a positive and we're ending at a negative. Since the question says what is the difference between the two temperatures, I know that means it wants me to subtract. So I'm going to write a subtraction symbol here under the word difference to help me remember that. So we started with 11.5 degrees, and we're going to subtract negative 6.7 degrees. So I can go ahead over to Desmos to solve. 11.5 minus negative 6.7. Notice I've got the subtraction symbol and the negative in there. And my answer is 18.2. So I know that the difference between these two temperatures is 18.2 degrees. And that answer makes sense to me because I know I started in the positives, I started above zero, and then I ended up in the negatives below zero. So that large difference does make, it di make sense to me. 18.2 degrees, that's just the degree symbol. Let's take a look at the next question. Number two. On Tuesday, the XYZ company stock was at $10.70 per share. They don't write the zero there, so you almost would read it as 10.7 if you weren't being careful. So if you want, you can go ahead and write the zero there now, $10.70. On Wednesday, it gained $4.12 and then lost $8.80. They wrote 8.8, .8, .8, but we know that there's a zero there, so that's $8.80 on Wednesday. What is the new price per share? So the gist of this problem is I started with my stock at $10.70, then it gained a little money, it got higher in value, and then it lost a little money, it got lower in value. So how can we show this mathematically? Well, we started at $10.70, and then we gained $4.12. That word gained is very important because it means we're going to add $4.12. The value of our stock was going up. But then, unfortunately, we lost $8.80. Again, that word there, lost, is extremely important because it tells us to take away $8.80. And the question is asking for the new price per share. So let's go over to Desmos. And we'll start with $10.70 plus $4.12 minus $8.80. And our final answer is $6.02. So our new price per share is $6.02. Let's look at the next question. Number 13. The scuba diver was 13 feet below the surface of the water and descended an additional 22 and a half feet. Eventually, the scuba diver ascended 30 feet toward the surface of the water. What is the location of the scuba diver in the water? Now that we've read the problem once all the way through, we can go ahead and highlight the important information. First of all, it says the scuba diver was 13 feet below the surface. When that word below tells me that we were underneath the water, so that's going to be represented with a negative 13. Then the scuba diver descended an additional 22 and a half feet. So descended means that the scuba diver went down. He went down 22 and a half feet more. So not just 22 feet more, but 22 and a half, or like 22.5. And then eventually the scuba diver ascended, meaning that he went back up 30 feet. If you didn't know that that word ascended me meant the scuba diver was going back up, this other hint toward the surface was telling you that they were going back up. 
if I was going back up towards the surface, then my um, elevation is going to go back up. So what is the location of the scuba diver in the water? Well, the scuba diver started at negative 13 feet, since they were 13 feet below the surface, and then they descended, they went down an extra 22 and one half feet. So like a mixed number, 22 and a half. And then the scuba diver ascended or went back up There we go, 30 feet towards the surface. We could also write 22 and a half feet as a decimal. So negative 13 minus 22.5 plus 30. So we can go over to Desmos and solve. So after we went down and then down some more and back up again, the scuba diver should be at negative 5.5 feet below the surface. So that's going to be choice D. Let's go ahead to the next question. Toby ran five and a half miles. Phil ran half the distance that Toby ran. Yolanda ran a total of 5.75 miles. What was the total distance combined of all three runners? Now that we've read the problem once all the way through, let's think about the gist of the problem. We've got three people who all ran different amounts, and we want to know what the total distance combined is of all three of those runners. So let's break it down. Toby ran five and a half miles, so we've got his number. But Phil, they didn't give us an actual distance for, they just told us that he ran half the distance that Toby ran. And then finally we have Yolanda and she ran a total of 5.75 miles. So let's go ahead and get organized down below and show a little bit. Of so first they mentioned Toby and they said that he ran five and one half miles. And I know that that's the same thing as 5.5 miles because one half is the same thing as 0 0.5. Phil, they did not give us the exact amount of miles that he ran, but we do know that he went half the distance that Toby did, so not quite as far as Toby. So we'll take that distance Toby ran, 5.5, and we'll divide it by 2 because that will tell us what half of 5.5 is. After we do that, we'll know the total distance that Phil ran. And then finally, we have Yolanda, and they told us that she ran a distance of 5.75 miles. So right now it's looking like Yolanda ran the most, then Toby, and then Phil. So over here, let's figure out how far Phil ran. 5.5 divided by 2 is 2.75. So Phil ran a total of 2.75 miles. So now that I know each person and how far they ran, I'm just going to add those three numbers together to get the total distance combined. So 5.5 plus 2.75 plus 5.75. So I could do this by hand or in my calculator to check. 5 plus 5 is 10. 7 plus 7 is 14. Plus one more would be 15. And another 5 is 20. Drop the decimal. Carry the 2. And 5 plus 5 is 10. Plus two more would be 12. And another two more would be 14. So I believe the answer is 14 miles, but I'm always going to use Desmos to check. 5.5 plus 2.75 plus 5.75. Sure enough, Desmos and I agree. We both got the answer is 14 total miles ran by all three of those runners. C. All right, question 17. Jessica had four and two-thirds cups of sugar. A cookie recipe called for three and one-thirds cups of sugar. If Jessica made one batch of cookies, how much sugar did she have left over? So now that we've read the problem once all the way through, let's highlight the important information. It tells us that Jessica had four and two-thirds cups of sugar. So that's what she's starting with. The cookie recipe calls for three and one-thirds cups of sugar. 
that means she's going to have to use three and one thirds cups of what she's got to make a batch of cookies. It says if Jessica made one batch of cookies, how much sugar did she have left over? Left over is really important there because they don't want to know how much is going into the cookies. They want to know how much she'll have left after you take that amount away from what she had started with. So let's show our work. So we know that Jessica starts with four and two thirds cups of sugar. And then she's going to take away three and one thirds cups of sugar because that's what's going into her batch of cookies. So we're going to subtract that amount from the four and two thirds. And after we do that, we'll figure out what that is going to equal. How much will she have left over after she bakes these cookies? So let's go over to Desmos and see what we can do. We can type in four and two thirds, and then we can subtract three and one third. And it won't give our answer to us as a mixed number or a fraction, but it will give it to us in decimal form. So we know that our answer is about 1.333 or 1.3 repeating. So you can draw the three dots or the line over the three to show that it's repeating. So looking at my answer choices, which one of these most closely matches 1.3 repeating? Well, it's going to look like one and some fraction remaining. So right away, A says one third of a cup. That doesn't sound like one and something, so I don't think A is going to work. B says one cup. Well, I know this wasn't exactly one cup. We got 1.33, so B is definitely not it. C says one and one thirds cup. Well, that sounds like one and a little more, so that might be a match. But then D says seven and two thirds cups. Well, that answer doesn't even make sense because Jessica starts with four and two thirds cups, meaning she never had this much amount. There's no way she's going to have seven and two thirds cups left over after she takes this much away from four and two thirds. So just to be on the safe side, let's figure out what one third and one and one third are as a decimal using Desmos, just to be sure. So if I type one third into the calculator, I can clearly see that that's 0 0.333 which is not a match here for my answer. So A, no good. And I was pretty sure the answer was C, but I can go ahead and check just to be sure. One and one third. Oh, maybe it won't tell me. But I do know that one third is 0.33, and one and one third is going to be one with this 0.33 remainder. So for C, I can write 1.333. So C is a match. And that was our last question for our Practical Problems with Rational Numbers review. Thanks for watching.